Hi, Mark Lawson, president of the ECS Publishing Group, home of Morningstar Music, uh, EC Shermer, and Galaxy. And we are so very pleased to be joined by Paul Smith, who is a co-founder of Votius 8 and is CEO of the Votius 8 Foundation. We're going to be discussing several things that uh, they have just released. So welcome, Paul. Glad that you're here. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. It's really nice to be here. So many of the people watching will have heard of Votius 8 and think of it as an a cappella group. And yet you released this wonderful Christmas album this past year in which it was full orchestra and choir. So kind of explain some of the what that is about and how the foundation works and uh, how its connection to folk, uh, Votius 8 works. Sure. Well, yes, it was for me one of our most enjoyable projects, you know, normally our focus as a foundation is on small a cappella ensembles, small uh, groups singing together and very much non orchestral, but we do um, occasionally throughout each year expand our forces. And so the Votches 8 Foundation as an umbrella has Votches 8, Apollo 5, and also now a new ensemble here based here in the US called Lyra. And then Sometimes we bring them together. We also have a program called Votches 8 Scholars, both in the UK and the US, which is designed to provide uh, professional development opportunities for outstanding young professionals. So actually, through the last five or six years, our team of amazing singers has expanded significantly. And so we now also have a Votches 8 Foundation Choir, which would be conducted by my dear brother, uh, Barnaby. And when we get projects like the one we did with Taylor Scott Davis for this Christmas album, it gives us a chance to bring everyone together and to bring in the Votches 8 Foundation Orchestra to make uh, a very different kind of musical experience to what we do day to day, but one that we absolutely uh, love. And this Christmas project was uh, for me, one of the absolute highlights. It was a beautiful collaboration with Taylor, um, some wonderful new settings of well-known um, Christmas carols, uh, but alongside the, um, the well-known carols, we also did a recording of Taylor's Magnificat, which was actually commissioned, I think, by a very good friend of ours, Matthew Greer, down in Albuquerque a few years ago. And it's an incredible beast of a Magnificat. It's wonderful, joyous. It's everything yeah, you'd come to expect from the pen of Taylor. Um, so it was a real, real pleasure for us to put this album together. And actually, it was something that came out as a film first, then as a CD. It was part of our Live from London series that we ran through the pandemic. Um, and it's been a, a source of great joy, I think, for many thousands of people all over the world who've connected with this music. And then to have it released on Decca, no less, uh, was was a very nice step. And now, as we're seeing the connection into the publishing world as well, I hope it's a piece of music and I hope Taylor's music generally is going to be ever better known because he writes beautifully for voices. Yes, I, I agree. Well, the album certainly received great reviews. You must have been pleased. Tell us a little bit about some of the accolades that you've received for that. Well, I think the, the thing we've learned over 20 years, Mark, is that when the good reviews come along, you smile and gra graciously accept them. Um, and when the less positive things are said, we embrace the fact that we thought it was nice anyway. Um, so yeah, certainly it received very positive feedback. As I was preparing for this discussion with you, I was actually took a few minutes to, to scroll back and, and look through things. And the feedback was just fantastic. And Decca pulled together all of the information about how widely received this album has been. And um, both press and people alike have, have fallen in love with this, this album. And I also get a sense it's not just an album that's now done. The, the beautiful thing about Christmas is it comes back every year. And so I think uh, particularly the way we appreciate Christmas music within the core music sphere, there is that joy of singing the same things again and again. And I really think that music on this album has that opportunity. I could imagine enjoying it just as much 20 years from now as I have over the past year as it's come to the fore for the first time. So yeah. my sense is that this is going to become something of a Christmas favorite. I certainly hope so. And I can promise you when I'm curled up by the log fire um, next year, I'm going to have it back on uh, playing and uh, enjoying my eggnog or, or whatever it is we, we choose to drink, the mulled wine maybe. Well, let's talk a moment about Taylor's settings. We have the Magnificat, which of 
we've talked about before and it's been in the catalog. But there are these new Christmas carol settings, and they're familiar carols, obviously, that he's kind of treated in a new way. If someone had not heard the recording at this point, how, how would you go about describing these carols? The thing about Taylor's music, I find, is that everyone who listens to it is reminded of someone else when they're and there's always like a oh that moment there reminds me of this thing here and this moment here reminds me of this thing here and it's always someone incredibly incredibly good Mm -hmm. Uh, and i think that's again a mark of taylor's um capacity as a composer he somehow draws together inspirations but then crafts them in such a way as you actually know it's him. And I think that's the sign of a, a good composer. You can see his inspirations, but you can also see his own identity. For me, I think the best description I've had and been connected to was the combination of Hans Zimmer meets John Rutter. And I can't imagine for me a better way of describing this Christmas <laughs> album in particular. There's something truly epic and cinematic about some of the stuff he writes, but John Rutter is such a master craftsman of the, particularly in the Christmas music sphere. And that's very evident with Taylor as well. So I think if you imagine those two sound worlds, crash them together, you might end up with something like Taylor has envisaged. Well, all of these settings are published individually and can be performed with or without orchestra. And so I want to encourage people to take a look at them and uh, know that you could do one or you could do all in a program. And I think that they work Uh, exceptionally well. And it's wonderful to hear such a great performance from the Voges 8 Foundation. And so the recording is available on all the streaming services, or certainly you can purchase it as well. What's the name of the recording? Oh, I'm so worried. It's just called A Choral Christmas, I think. called A Choral Christmas, I believe. (laughs) That's right, isn't it? (laughs) So if people were looking it up, they could certainly look up Voges 8. They could also look up A Choral Christmas. And it's a wonderful, wonderful recording. So before we leave, talk a moment about some of the new initiatives of Voches 8. I know that you mentioned Lyra, but talk just a little bit about this. Sure. Well, thanks for giving me the space to talk about this, Mark. As I said, we what started off nearly 20 years, we're going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary in the season we're about to be launching into. And what started off as a uh, you know, an acapella group who were a group of friends who like to sing together has become something much bigger now. So we now have a foundation in the UK, we have a foundation in France, and we have another foundation here in, in the US as well. I'm speaking to you from Michigan today, I was telling you just before we came online, and I'm about to go and uh, visit a, a male chorus for an evening session, having spent the day with Lyra in a couple of high schools. And that this day in itself for me captures kind of the way the foundation works. We have a one side of what we do is absolutely focused on world-class performance and the other side is focused on world-class education outreach and community work and that takes so many different shapes but we've built a program now across the different foundations that we have which is basically based around hub cities so i think we have 28 different cities or rural communities that we're working in um, across the us uk and France this year. And these are places that we don't just visit to do a concert, but we actually embed our artists much more deeply into the community. So there'll there'll be visits happening throughout the year. And then one of our performance ensembles at some point will turn up and lead a kind of big singing um, event of some form. So as I mentioned, Lyra is the new ensemble that we started here in the US over the last few months. And it's an ensemble that we basically started because we took a look at the landscape and um, we're passionate about providing full-time jobs for people in our industry and we looked at what is possible at the moment in the us and there's not really that opportunity if you're a woman to to sing full-time in a professional ensemble so we wanted to try to address that so the part of the reason behind launching lira this last uh, few months or so has been trying to address that need So we now have six incredible vocalists who are just in the process of making a first album, um, doing their first concert tours, doing the first set of workshops. And that fits totally for us within the the Voches 8 Foundation family. So 
now instead of having Rochester's eight and Apollo five off doing concerts, and maybe there's 200 of those happening each year, we now have a third ensemble as well based here in the US because we can see how much work there is to, to do and how much opportunity for an upper voice ensemble to thrive. So it's a very exciting time for us. Uh, we've yeah. also been doing quite a lot of work with the BBC singers over the last year, and we're thrilled that the BBC has now announced that they're going to be continuing, which is excellent work right. uh, wonderful very yeah. good news for the ecosystem in which we inhabit and then alongside that we're thrilled always to be working with publishing partners so this for me mark is a real treat we have our own record label as well partnerships with deca there's always a lot of different things going on but yeah. really everything is about trying to maintain and encourage as much opportunity within our own ecosystem so that as many voices can flourish well all of us at ecs are just thrilled to be working with you on so many projects. And then we're just so pleased to see the impact that you're having around the United States, but all over the world. So really applaud you for the efforts that you have done and for what impact you're making. So keep it up. So. Thanks, Mark. It's very kind. It's lovely to chat today. Yes, it was wonderful to chat with you. I want to encourage people to take a look at our website and look at Taylor's pieces. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks.